In this video, I'm going to talk about what it's been like working as a solutions architect at AWS for just a little more than a year now. I'm going to talk about what I do every day, what I like about the role. And if you stick around till the end, I'll even talk a little bit about everyone's favorite topic, compensation. Now, of course, I'm speaking on behalf of myself here, not AWS. And I also like to reiterate everybody's experience is very different. Uh, there are different teams at Amazon, which means that no role at Amazon or AWS is a monolith. Even the solutions architect role can vary depending on which particular team you report into. That said, I'll share my experience working both with enterprise customers and now what Amazon calls digital native customers or customers that were born in the cloud. Let's get right into it. As a solutions architect, it's my job to represent AWS in the field with customers. So uh, particularly what that means is, you know, I'm like a technical point of contact and almost like a, a consultant in a way uh, to customers that are building applications on top of the AWS platform. Now, this is typically what you would call a pre-sales type of solutions architecture role. But what's really interesting about AWS is when you're a technical seller, at least a, a account solutions architect, which is what I am, means I'm like a general solutions architect. So in that role, you actually don't have a commission-based compensation plan, which is really unique for pre-sales. Most pre-sales organizations put SEs and SAs on like an 80-20, 70-30, or even heard of 60-40 commission-based comp plans. But at AWS, you have this sort of comp structure where it's very stock focused, but your pay for the first couple of years is, is almost guaranteed. So I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video when I dig more into comp. But suffice it to say, a lot of the job is listening to customers, hearing what they have going on, trying to get them to spend time with you and talk to you. And the goal is to help them be successful on the AWS platform. And what's cool about a platform like AWS is the business model is such that if customers are successful, that generally means they're launching new workloads. Maybe they've got a new AI workload or some new initiative or some new app that they're they're launching, some new product they're creating. So as customers consume more AWS services, that's generally because they're growing. And so uh, the business model is such that when customers are successful, AWS is successful. So the charter of a solutions architect is not to necessarily drive revenue, but actually to go out and ensure that customers are successful with their business and with the AWS platform. Now, of course, there are synergies such that if you're making your customers successful, they're probably uh, growing their AWS footprint over time, because over time, most companies grow their tech, real estate and footprint. That's just how the economy works. So solutions architects can be there to kind of accelerate that. Now, in my role, I spend about half of my time working with customers. And so that can mean being on calls with customers. That means preparing for calls with customers, building PowerPoint decks and demos and other assets. Sometimes that's actually researching something on behalf of a customer, meeting internally to prepare for a meeting or coordinating resources to meet with a customer. It's a lot of injecting your customers with technical information and business information and ultimately trying to remove blockers from them uh, building something new and innovating on behalf of their company with the cloud. Some examples of specific things that I've worked on are uh, building a data warehouse and ETL system for a customer, building AI-based uh, knowledge base support and search capabilities within customers, launching compute workloads and migrating workloads into the cloud from on-premises data centers hosted on hypervisors like VMware and and analytics and machine learning solutions so that uh, companies could forecast their sales and uh, efficiently use their inventory and supply chain. So it's really interesting because cloud can kind of do just about anything. There are so many different solutions and architectures that can be delivered with cloud services. So you really get exposed, or at least there's potential to get exposed to a really wide variety of technology, which is what one thing I really like about the role, because prior to Amazon and AWS, I was oftentimes in specialty type of roles. I worked at VMware for about five years, which was fun, but it's very focused on compute and infrastructure, which is great. But there are other high growth areas of technology, too, that I wanted to get in on, like data and serverless technologies and these other more interesting 
uh, newer things that were launching. And so cloud was a really great way to use my traditional uh, skills because, you know, infrastructure and compute and containers and all these things are still very relevant in the cloud environment, but also there's going to always be new services available and new innovations and new technology trends that make it so that way you can kind of always stay on the bleeding edge, uh, which I think most technologists enjoy being in that type of environment. So I spent half of my time doing that. And then the other half of my time, I spend doing what a lot of people refer to as like thought leadership and scaling. So at AWS, this can mean things like talking at reInvent. I host live streams regularly. Some people write a lot of blogs. Some people create video content. Some people do internal trainings for the field. There are a lot of different ways for you to uh, scale and uh, it, perform thought leadership. And there's all these different paths and opportunities to do that at AWS. And I think it's really fun because if you're a creative type, um, I, I think that this role you can really thrive in because for me, I've always had a kind of hybrid, like engineering creative type brain. I think that's a really interesting personality type uh, in this type of role. I think if you're uh, focused on engineering, you can absolutely focus on your engineering excellence here and engage in thought leadership in a, in a more technical way. Uh, but for me, it's been really fun to kind of merge uh, my creative side with my engineering and technical side and and that kind of relationship building side that's essential to any uh, role inside of a sales or marketing organization. And, you know, I'm constantly learning to to do new things too. So, you know, it's encouraged in a role like this to try to create new things and new mechanisms that you can use to deliver additional value to customers or help your teammates scale and those are things that I, I didn't really get to launch anything huge in my first year at Amazon. I think there's always this idea or thought in the back of everyone's mind that you're really encouraged to try to take big swings and launch new initiatives. And so that's something that's intriguing to me. And if I ever think of something that's a good enough idea, I'll try it. I don't know if I ever will. I think there's a lot of different variables involved in that type of thing. But hey, if I ever do have an idea that I feel like is an awesome one, I'll give it a swing. And I think that kind of leads me to another piece of what's cool about this role at this particular company is that it's a, it's a technical role at a very technical business within Amazon, which is AWS. And you're really encouraged to innovate. You know, you're encouraged to create things for customers or push the envelope and take risks. And a lot of people would say Amazon is very startup-like in, in its cultural sense anyway. It is very much not a startup in that it's a very large business and there is a lot of process within the business, but it's startup-like in that you were encouraged to push the envelope and challenge authority and take things to the limit and turn things all the way up to 11. And a lot of people, I think particularly a lot of high-performing uh, people that really are passionate and, and excited about the work that they do exhibit those qualities. So uh, it's a really great place for uh, somebody like me who I think wants to learn and grow uh, and who really enjoys, again, these kind of creative opportunities to build and invent new things or create new content and resources while also getting to be in the field, hands-on, uh, working with customers and, and helping them understand how to build their own uh, production applications on top of AWS's cloud. I said at the beginning, I'd talk about comp. So I will talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, Amazon and, and most of uh, what is oftentimes referred to as like a big tech or a uh, Fang or Ming, or I don't even know what they're calling these companies these days, but Amazon you know, and a lot of these big companies have similar uh, pay ranges. And Amazon is known to pay quite well in the solution architect role is really no exception. Particularly Amazon puts a premium on their technical roles, um, like software developers and absolutely as a premium put on these field facing technical roles like solutions architect. So I'm at L6 solutions architect. And while I'm not comfortable discussing my own compensation publicly like this, what I'll say is um, most people that I personally know that are L6 solutions architects in a major geo like New York, San Francisco, I live in Boston, for example, um, are making somewhere in the high 200s or like low 
300, 300 and some change uh, type of range. So that's the general comp range. There's, uh, I'm sure, so many exceptions uh, to this for different candidates. I, I, I don't really know how it works. Frankly, I don't want to know all those details. And that's for a senior solutions architect, which is what I'm in. Uh, there are like levels down that make a little bit less and levels up that make a little bit more. It's very common to see uh, solutions architects and principal solutions architects, which are like the quote unquote L7. And one really motivating part of working at AWS is getting promoted. People that I know in L7 roles make uh, in usually in like the mid 300s up, upwards of the low 400s is what I'm usually hearing about in the US in these major geos. And so that's always um, really cool. Like when you're operating in an environment where you know that earning potential is really high if you're a performer. I think that's motivating to a lot of people. It's hard sometimes too, because there are so many talented people at Amazon that outperforming all the people at your current level to the extent that you deserve to be promoted takes a lot of something. I, I don't know, but I, you know, some of my friends have gotten promoted to L7 and it's certainly doable. And something I think many people at Amazon aspire to, to do while they're here. Um, for me, I, I don't know how long I want to be at this current level, but I, I like it and I want to really just focus on doing a good job and not really think too much about getting promoted. My philosophy is always like do good work and hopefully that type of thing follows. This is my second time at Amazon. I left once and then I came back. I've talked about that on other videos. And so obviously I think it's a decent place to work. Uh, I think partic again, in this role, it's such a high demand role that it's so hard to find people that are both very technical and that are also very good working in the field with customers and who can create and invent uh, content and scale themselves. So it's, it's, difficult to find those folks. So <laughs> if you're watching and you're one of those folks and you're looking to work at Amazon, just as an FYI, I'm aware of, it looks like hundreds of roles open in solutions architecture on the Amazon website right now. My manager is hiring, uh, I know for sure. And I think a lot of those essay roles are open right now because it's such a hard role to fill. So if you happen to be interested and you're qualified, um, I want to stress that because I can't really help people that aren't qualified for it. But if you're qualified and interested, um, so you've done some field facing customer work before and you've got those technical skills, let me know, reach out. Maybe we can talk, I can fill you in on a little bit more about what the role is like. I'm very pro people working here. I think it's a great place to work. It's a very rewarding role in a lot of ways. It is not an easy job. If you're looking for an easy job, this is uh, one of the last places you probably want to work. But if you're looking for a fun job, I think it's solid. Oh, the last thing I'll say, because I'm talking about what's e the fact that it's kind of difficult, um, is like the work-life balance piece. Uh, I know this is something that a lot of people ask and think about. Honestly, I'll just speak, I can just speak personally. I, I'm always kind of afraid to talk openly about this, but I, I work 40 hours a week. Like I really don't try to overdo it. On a really busy week where I've got something I'm excited about, I might work 45 hours. Uh, 50 hours is really pushing it for me. And I try not to work 50 hour weeks very often. And I also try to limit myself to working no more than a couple of weekends a year because I have a life outside of work. And, and also like, I, I've always been like a high stress, high anxiety person. And, and when I really spend too much mental and physical energy working, it's really quite bad for my, my health. So I just police that. I don't find it limits me. I think you can still perform as long as you're efficient with your time and you're focusing on high value stuff always then it can be a really solid work environment. That said, if you're like a work addict and you have find a really hard time saying no to things, there's also a place for you here, but uh, there is probably an infinite supply of work at a company like this. Uh, the company that's always growing and trying and, and, and aspiring to invent on behalf of customers. So there's an endless supply of things to try to invent and big bets to spend time and energy on. And so if you have a hard time saying no, uh, I do know people that experience burnout here because they uh, overcommit uh, themselves and are not able to police that completely. And nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of different ways to live your life. And for some people, they don't have the same levels of stress and anxiety that I have. So they're able to give that much. But I think the point I want to make is that you can be successful in a role like this at a company like this and still retain your personal life, your happiness, your freedom, and make a decent living doing some fun stuff. Hopefully this was helpful. I think people like these kind of personal stories more than just factoids. So I hope this has helped somebody that's considering the role and good luck if you're trying to 
get it in Amazon. Peace.